Today we're talking about permutations and combinations, lesson number four, and we're going to deal specifically with combinations. Now combinations are a little bit different than permutations, and so as an investigation, let's take a look at this example here in part one. So we have a student, they want to read three books, The Grapes of Wrath, Wars, and the Bean Trees, and Steve is only allowed to sign out one English book from the school library per month, but let's just say at a time. So list all the different orders in which Steve could sign out the three books. Well, one day he can walk in and get The Grapes of Wrath. So if we say The Grapes of Wrath are denoted by G, W for the Wars, and B for Bean Trees. So first day he goes in and Grapes of Wrath. Then the next day he comes in and gets The Wars. And then the next day after that comes in and gets The Bean Trees. There, that's one. Or in a parallel universe, Steve could sign out the books this way. He could walk in first and get Grapes of Wrath, then the Bean Trees, and then the Wars. Or another parallel universe, Steve walks in and gets the Wars first, then the Grapes of Wrath, then the Bean Trees, and we continue on with this so that we have. These six parallel universes, the six different ways that this could happen, where Steve could sign out the three books, where the order does matter. These are permutations. Now what about Tariq? Tariq is allowed to sign out all three books at the same time. How many different ways can he sign out all three books at the same time? Well, he can come in one day and get Grapes of Wrath, Wars, and Bean Trees. Another day he can walk in and get Grapes of Wrath, the Bean Trees, and the Wars. Or he could get the Wars and so on and so forth. But how many different ways can he do that? Well, if the order in which, if he gets them all at the same time, and it doesn't matter which order he gets them in, as long as he's in, in possession of all three, then how many ways can that happen? Well, this is one way. So Steve here. Six parallel universes, six ways. Here, Tariq, they're all the same way. You could say, but there's six ways here. But if they all have, if he has them all at the same time, then there's no difference in those six ways. In fact, those six ways are repeated. Part A here with Steve, order was important. Having coming in and getting the grapes of wrath first was different than coming in and getting the grapes of wrath second. Now, Tariq could do the exact same thing, but if we were talking about a selection where as long as he had the three books it, and the order was not important, then that is an example of a combination. So what is the relationship between a combination and a permutation? When we talk about a selection, we can say a selection of set of elements in which the order of the selection is not important is called a combination. So suppose the students in part one were required to read only two of the books. So we have Steve here, two of the books, Grapes of Wrath and the Wars, or the Grapes of Wrath and Bean Trees, or the Wars, Grapes of Wrath. That's three of these ways here. And with Tariq here, if he has the two books here, and it doesn't matter which order they came in, then having the Grapes of Wrath first and then the Wars second is the same thing as having the wars first and then the grapes of wrath second. There's no specific order that he has to put these books in, or even a specific order that he's concerned about reading first. Whereas Steve, the order does matter. So if we continue this chart, we could say bean trees, and then grapes of wrath, and that combined with this one, here according to Tariq here, those are the same. You have the grapes and the beans. Well, what about the other way that Steve could do it? Well, he could start with the wars first. Wars, then beans. Or he could do beans, then wars. But that altogether means, here in Tariq's mind, it's beans and wars. 
So let's complete the following statement here. The number of combinations is equal to the number of permutations divided by, in this case, is divided by 2. Or in other words, 2 factorial. So you can imagine what happens when there are 3 here. A permutation is an arrangement of elements in which the order of the arrangement is taken into account. So when we're selecting a set of elements, we also want the arrangement of those elements. There's going to be a certain order to those elements that we selected. With a combination, it's a selection and the order or arrangement of those elements is not important to us. So it's not taken into account. And so you can say then that a combination is a lot less fussy than a permutation. You can also think of it like this. A combination could be like milk and cereal. You know, it doesn't matter whether the cereal goes in first or the milk goes in first, it's still cereal and milk, uh, where a permutation would be something like taking a shower and getting dressed. There's a certain order that uh, is required in those cases. Sorry for the silly examples. Let's take a look at part three here. We have Al, Byron, Colin, Dave, and Eric. We're going to say A for Al, B for Byron, C for Colin, D for Dave, E for Eric. And we have the winner of a cross-country race wins $50, the runner-up wins $25, the third place runner wins $10. So the table below shows all the possible ways in which the three prizes could be awarded to those five participants in the race. Let's even pretend that they're the only five in the race. So here we have all the possibilities. Question, is this an example of permutations or combinations? And this is an example of a permutation because here we have Al being first, Byron being second, and Colin being third is different than Al winning first, Colin winning second, and Byron coming in third. Those two are different even though those are the same three people. Same thing here, if we have Colin first, Dave second, and Eric third, that's different than Colin first, Eric beating out Dave, even though those are the same three people. This is an example of permutations. How many ways are there to award the three prizes? Well, we can count. We can say there's one, two, three, four, five, six rows, and one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten columns. So we could say six times 10 is going to be 60, but we can also think there's going to be five people and we're going to be arranging, selecting three and arranging them. So selecting three and arranging them here out of five, this is going to be five factorial, oh, five times four times three, and we have five times 12, that is equal to 60, but also you can think of the formula, which is 5 factorial over 5 minus 3 factorial, and that's equal to 5 factorial over 2 factorial, which is 120 divided by 2, which is also 60, so we can have it that way. Okay, let's take a look at this different example. We have this cross-country race, and the school has been awarded three places at a running clinic. Now notice very carefully about the wording here. This three places at a running clinic, are they at all different? And no, those positions are all exactly the same. So it doesn't matter who comes in first, second, or third, as long as they were awarded this position at the running clinic. And there's no difference. There's no arrangement of who is first to the clinic or second or third, it does not matter. And so the order of that our selection doesn't matter, just that we're selecting three without the arrangement of those selected three. So we have three lucky students. Here's the table, it's duplicated below. We're gonna circle the different ways the three students can be chosen. So we need to remember, as long as we're selecting three students, we're not worried about the arrangement of those selected three students. So here, if we take a look at this first column, we can see that we have Al, Byron, and Colin all in this whole column. Now, there's this is all the arrangements that they can, the places that they can come in. But remember, we're not concerned with the arrangement of our selection. So that is one possible way. 
Then Al Byron and Dave is a different way. And then we could say Al Byron and Eric. They're also different. And we can say the same thing here and here. And in fact, we can circle every single column. And so what do you notice? Well, what you notice is that, yes, this is a combination because we are not concerned with the arrangement of our selected number of students. So how many ways are there to select the three students? There's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So there are ten ways. And if you look at the difference between the permutation and the number of combinations, it looks like the combinations here have this repetition happening of six times, or in other words, three factorial times the number of ways of combinations will equal the permutations. So let's complete the following statement then. The number of combinations equal to the number of permutations divided by six, or in other words, three factorial, and that three comes important because it's the number that we selected, three factorial. So we come to our formula then, We're talking about combinations of n different elements taken r at a time, where r is less than or equal to n. We have n c r is equal to n p r divided by r factorial. Or in other words, now remember that the n p r looks like n factorial over n minus r factorial, and when we're dividing by r factorial, then it'll become n factorial over n minus r factorial times 1 over r factorial. So that's how this r factorial gets into the bottom there. So here is our formula. ncr is equal to n factorial over n minus r factorial, r factorial. Now let's talk about this. So we can see the n pr, the permutations formula here in this, in this formula, that's part of it, and then we have this extra r factorial. Now we had talked about repetitions before with permutations, and this part here for permutations, we're saying arrange n elements, and we're not concerned about the elements that we're not selecting. So we're not concerned about the arrangements of the elements that we're not selecting, and here with combinations, we are also not concerned with the arrangement of the objects that we are selecting. That's where this R factorial, we can think of it in that way. The NCR key on the calculator can be used to evaluate combinations. In some texts, NCR can be written as N over R here with a big bracket, and there's no line in between. It's just NR in a big bracket. So let's go ahead and try our luck at example one. We have three students from a class of 10 to be chosen to go on a school trip. In how many ways can they be selected? Now again, do we care about the order in which these three students are arranged once they are selected? And no, they, because there's no distinguishable feature about these three students uh, being chosen to go on a trip. So this is a combination. So here we're going to say that it's 10, out of 10 students, we're going to choose three of them. Again, we're not concerned with the arrangement of those selected three. So this is equal to 10 factorial over 10 minus 3 factorial. We can also think of it like this. We're not concerned with the arrangement of the other students that we're not selecting. And we're also not concerned with the arrangement of the students that we are selecting. So here we can say, and this is 10 factorial over 10 minus 3 is 7 factorial, 3 factorial. This is going to be 10 times 9 times 8 times 7 factorial, all over 7 factorial, 3 factorial. This 7 factorial with its exclamation mark, right? is going to cancel, and then this 3 factorial, which is, well, let's write it out. So here we have 10 times 9 times 8 over 3 times 2 times 1, and this 2 can cancel out half of that 8, and this 3 can take out one of the factors of 3 here, 
So we get 10 times 3 times 4. This is equal to 120. So let's confirm the answer using our calculator. So here it is. And we're doing 10. Now math. Move over to probability. Down to number 3 now with the NCR. And with a 3. And we get 120, which is what we see. All right, let's take a look at class example number two. To win the Lotto 649, a person must correctly select six numbers between 1 to 49. Now, Jasper selected the six numbers from the birth dates of his family 3, 7, 9, 11, 20, and 29. How many different selections of numbers could he have made? Well, out of 49 numbers, 49, he's going to select six of those numbers, but he's not concerned with the arrangement or order of those numbers. So 49 choose six, we can use our calculator. 49 choose six, and we get this huge number, which is 13 million. 983,816. So imagine your chances for Lotto 649 here. If there are 13,983,816 possible uh, ways that you can select the six numbers. Class example three, the Athletic Council decides to form a subcommittee of seven council members to look at how funds are raised. There are a total of 15 athletic council members. There's nine males and six females. The subcommittee must consist of exactly three females. So here from the question we can see we're talking about seven council members to form a subcommittee. And what else do we see? We see that there are nine males and there's six females. And we need exactly three females. So with that in mind, we want to determine the number of ways of selecting the females. Well, there are six females, and we want to select three females, but we are not interested in arranging those three females, or, or the order does not matter there. Because being on the council, there's no actual significant positions or distinguishable features that are different on this council. Each of the three females are going to be on the same level. So there's no distinguishable feature, and therefore... The, we're not interested in the arrangement of those females. The males, well, we have nine males, and we need to select, if we've selected three already for our seven member council, then we need to choose four. And again, we are not interested in the arrangement of the males because they are all the same status. They have, uh, there's no distinguishable features about any of the positions on that council. Okay, the subcommittee then. Now remember, we're choosing the females and we're choosing the males, so the word and implies this multiplication. So we have 6 choose 3 times 9 choose 4. And here 6 choose 3 was equal to 20. And 9 choose 4 was equal to 126. So when we do 20 times 126, we get a total of... 2520, 2520 ways. Well, that is a lot. Again, it can sometimes go against intuition how big these numbers get. In part B, how many ways can the subcommittee be selected if Bruce, the football coach, must be included? That means then Bruce has to be on the committee, so a seven member committee now becomes a six member committee that we're dealing with. And so six members, there still must be three females, I'm assuming. So here we're still doing six choose three, which is 20 of the females. And now instead of the nine males, because Bruce was already taken out, we only have eight males to choose from. And we have to choose three, and not four here, but three. So eight choose three is going to be 56 and so the total number of ways is going to be the 6 choose 3 times the 8 choose 3 could even say that it's multiplied 
by one choose Bruce, one choose one, and that could be equal to then 1120 as a total. So you may wonder, what, what is this one choose one here? Well, this is Bruce has to be on the committee, so we are taking one Bruce and choosing him, and that's one. Let's take a look at class example number four, and in order to do this question, we need to understand a little bit more about a standard deck of 52 cards. So in a standard deck, we have four suits, spades, clubs, diamonds, and hearts. Each suit has 13 cards. Two suits are black, spades and clubs. Two suits are red, diamonds and hearts. Face cards are considered to be jacks, queens, and kings. Now poker is a card game played from a deck of 52 cards. How many different five card poker hands are possible? So poker, each person gets five cards. Uh, so how many different five card hands are possible? Well, out of a whole deck, which is 52, we're going to select five, and we don't care about the order in which we receive those five cards. We're just going to receive those five cards. And so 52 choose five is going to be equal to two, five, nine, eight, 8, 9, 60. So about 2.6 million possible poker hands. Wow, that's a lot. In B, here we have a list of restrictions that further restrict this number. So here, these are all the poker hands that are possible, but as a subset, there are certain ones that are all diamonds. Well, how do you do all diamonds? Well, here we're going to take of the diamonds, there's 13 diamond cards, and we're going to choose five of them. Well, that's going to be equal to 1,287. What about four black cards and one red card? Well, since two suits are black and two suits are red, that means half the deck is black. So that means that there's 26 black cards, and we need four of them. And then this and reminds us of a multiplication. And so we have one red card, there's going to be 26 red cards, we need just one out of the 26. So this is equal to 14,950 times, 26 choose one is 26, and we get a total of 388,700. Okay, what about three kings and two queens? Well, we think about a king in each suit. There's four kings to choose from, and we need three of them. And this and tells us we're going to multiply. There are two queens. Out of a possible of four queens, we need two of them. And so here we have four choose three is four. Four choose two is six. And so that's equal to 24. What about if we have three kings and three kings only? That means that we need to select those three kings. So out of four kings, we need to select three. And choose two from the remaining, from the remaining deck, but not kings. Well, if, if we take all the kings out, then that means we would have 52 minus 4, 48 cards left to choose 2. So here, if we just move over to this side, it's going to be 4 choose 3, and of the remaining 48 cards, we're going to choose 2, disregarding that other king that we can have. So that's equal to 4 times 48 choose 2 is 1128, and this becomes. 4,512. Okay, what about four aces? Here, are four aces. How many aces are there? There's actually four aces in the deck. We need to choose four. And then we also, so we think and one other card, right? So one other card is 48, choose one. So four. Choose 4, that's 1 way, times 48, that's equal to 48. So you can think, getting 4 aces out of the total number of poker hands 
wow, that is a slim chance. Here, in part six, we have five cards of the same suit, which is called the flush. Well, here we have 13 choose five, or, so say the, the suit was spades, or we could have 13 choose five if it was clubs, or we could have 13 choose five if it were diamonds, or we could have or 13 choose 5 if we were talking about hearts. Well, if that's the case, this or we think in mathematics as an addition sign. So really it's this plus this plus this plus this. But in other words, 4 times 13 choose 5. Well, this is 4 times, what is 13 choose 5? So 13 choose 5 is 1287 and so that is equal to 5148 all right you are ready for your assignment and i will see you in class